Hey, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to show you a piece of art that I rejected from my newest class. And while I do it, I want to talk about this post by a guy named Tanner in Colorado. He said, can someone explain this to me? Is there a term for it? When I pick up a new hobby, I learn the basics, I start to progress, and eventually I start getting worse and can never get back to my peak. Man, is it the most frustrating thing because I know what I'm capable of. I just can't do it anymore, even though I just did it. Is this making sense? And he did a smart thing. He tagged Hank Green, who is a smart person. Always ta tag Hank when you have a question. Well, I wanted to uh, talk about what I went through and how Tanner's question and Hank's reply kind of got me over the hump as I was trying to create for the Coral Enchantment class that I recently released. And this piece of art is a reject from that. And I'm going to tell you what went on in my head, okay? Tanner is a guitarist and software developer, according to his bio. And I don't know whether he was trying art. I don't know what the hobby was he was asking about. But fortunately, I was uh, just drawn to the fact that he asked Hank a question, because Hank usually has interesting things he shares. If you don't follow him, he's one of the vlog brothers. But Hank replied back to him with a graph. And I didn't look up details of the graph or the study that created it, but here is the post by Hank, which says, you might not be getting worse. Your ability to de detect flaws might be getting better. And your ability to notice imperfection is once again exceeding your ability. You have basically recreated this semi-famous graph. And I am sure you could probably put that into the interwebs and find out where the original study was or the article that was written about it, whatever that might be. While I was working on the art for the Coral Enchantment class, I went through the ringer. I was doubting myself like crazy because I couldn't get my drawings to work. Typically, what I do is, you know, lots of sketches go on in my life, and I had been sketching for a couple of years in advance of this class corals and bubbles and underwater scenes, underwater layouts, coming up with ideas so that by the time I got to actually filming, all I'd have to do was take a bit of this one, a bit of that one, and a bit of that one, put them together in a scene and put it on film. That's typically how a lot of my classes work. Well, this one was not working at all. I would get to the end of each drawing and think, nope, that's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. Sometimes it was not good enough to the point of like pitching entirely and sometimes it just went into a, a pile that I could make something with, but it was not still going to be good for a class. But all of it was just like, I can't seem to get over this. What is the problem? I would come up with one drawing that might be all right, but then I'd hit a roadblock and I'd have three or four more that would go badly. And I couldn't figure out quite what was going on, but I was feeling terrible about myself as an artist. But I went back in my mind to that conversation between Tanner and Hank. And when I was thinking about the takeaway from that, it really helped me because basically when your vision as an artist is bigger than what your skills can produce, that's the gap that you find yourself in when, when your brain is taking in a lot of really great information, you know enough to be dangerous. You just can't do it yet. You're in a good place. And I found myself trying to find ways to celebrate that place that I was in, even though I was very frustrated, really mad at myself and, and feeling like, like, man, do I still even have it? Or am I just... Am I just not worth even trying this anymore? I should just give this up. And as I was kind of going through the ringer, I got out all the pieces that I had rejected and I laid them all out and I was looking at them and realized the problem that I had with each one of them was composition. It didn't have anything to do with the marker work or the rendering or anything. It was the composition, the layout of the scene. There was just something wrong with it. 
and they weren't all consistently wrong. They were just all wrong. And that was a big learning for me. That was a moment when I went, oh my goodness, that's, that's crazy that I have learned enough about composition to know when I got it really wrong. Like that's, that's wacky to me, <laughs> but it's good. I learned all of that from other mediums because I have taken a good long break. You may have noticed from alcohol markers. I've used them occasionally, but I used to all the time do marker work. And I've set that aside because I had gotten so bored with alcohol markers. I wasn't learning anything with them anymore. There wasn't anybody ahead of me on the alcohol marker journey that I could learn from. There wasn't anybody to pull me forward. So I went to mediums where there are people that are way ahead of me that I can learn from and let that inspire me instead. And coming back to alcohol markers after a long time of not using them, I had to polish my skills again. But I also brought so much more to the table that alcohol markers can't do, that other mediums can. And all of that, that revelation for me was exciting. And I feel like I'm in a really good place because I finally did figure out how to get 10 uh, lessons in that course that I'm very proud of. But I've learned now something else about myself that I, I want to become better at composition so that I can naturally do it rather than having to think about it so much, which I had to do in order to make this class work. And I want to go find people that I can learn that from. So whatever your issue is that's that's in that gap, that's creating that gap between what you physically can do, what you physically have already done, and the place where your mind knows you want to get to, that's the place to focus your energy and attention. If you need to learn better blending, find people who blend well. If you need to learn better underlying drawing skills to make your drawings work better, then go take some drawing classes to bring to your work in whatever other medium. Like whatever that gap is, that's a signal to you to pay more attention to it, not to shirk it, not to run away from it, not to be afraid of it, but to celebrate the fact that you've got enough knowledge there to be dangerous you just need to get your physical skills up to snuff that you can render it, that you can make it happen. So I'm not really sure if that is helpful to any of you who are going through the ringer. It was helpful to me to have that little revelation. And thank you to Tanner for asking the question, for Hank for answering it. And I'm going to turn this into a card. This is a perfectly fine drawing it just didn't fit in with what I was teaching in the class because everything I did in this drawing was somehow included in one of these other lessons. That's the only reason it got cut. So the uh, link is in the doobly-doo for both the class as well as the Olo giveaways. Don't forget to go enter the giveaways. The uh, whole thing ends on the 31st. And I want to make sure you get in there and maybe qualify to win a prize. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.